this is Bobby. I'm compelled to go to play with a video today showing how to test power supply board DPS 162LP. Uh, we do that for a customer. Uh, it's nothing unusual or fancy actually. Uh, it's a classic power supply board for an LCD TV and it's being controlled from this connector which is called CM2. And there is a short table here that tells you what are the pin meanings and on top of that the pin meanings are actually written next to the pins themselves so you can see that the very first pin down there is 3.3 standby voltage it's not written down there because there is not enough space but you can see that right next to it is ACD uh, this is abbreviation for AC detect this pin is getting logical high that is anywhere between 2.6 uh, and 5 volts and in this case if the standby is 3.3 then my guess is it will be anywhere between 2.6 and 3.3 uh, when the board detects that it is connected to AC power and AC power is present this is needed uh, for the main board of the TV to shut off in case the power stops suddenly uh, this is instant change here and the power board has enough energy stored in capacitors in the power supply to do some uh, urgent storing of data and prepare for emergency shutdown. This is the meaning of the ACD pin. We are not going to be using it today. Uh, just covered what it is. And then the next pin is called power, uh, power on. This pin needs to receive logical 1, uh, which is again between 2.6 and in this case 3.3 volts from the main board in order to wake up the rest of the board. Uh, standby is usually provided by some very small transformer. It will be this one, uh, where most of the power of a power supply board is provided by, by our other um, circuits on the board. They are not normally engaged. Uh, this is a part of the board that's called power factor correction circuit. It is responsible for a number of things, but uh, it basically gets activated when uh, the board gets signaled, sending, sending logical one to the power on pin. It's called signaling or waking up the board or turning on the board and in LCD TVs. It uh, makes the power factor correction turn on, which in turn raises the output voltage on this main mains capacitor uh, from usually 160 to about 390, 400 volts. And then the secondary and the more powerful transformer is engaged, and that produces the other more powerful output voltages for uh, inverters, for uh, audio amplifier other auxiliary power voltages for the main board etc etc uh, there are differences and variations that i'm not going to get into now there are a few articles at our blog that talk about those uh, this board is presently apparently turned on which means let me see if i can get a clip which means that we should be able to measure 3.3 volts on the standby. Well, my crocodile is somewhere so I'm gonna just stuck that up and hope it makes contact. And this is the first pin here. I didn't measure it. Oh there it is. 3.3 volts. Needs to make a good contact. So we do have 3.3 volts on the first pin, which is AC detect, that tells the standby circuit of this transformer and some of those, whichever is responsible for the 3.3 volts, is working. Uh, the next step that we will make is I will just take a simple cable out of the out of a multi-wire cable like this. And uh, I'm going to connect that from 3.3 standby to the third pin, okay, which is power on.
Now, the board does a very faint noise, uh, ticking, literally. And uh, what happens is, as I said, uh, the power factor correction circuit gets engaged, so there will be 400 volts here, 390, 400, somewhere there. 392 and stable and also 24 volts on the output will be present 24 volts on the other connector which is for the backlight inverters it says unregulated I don't know if you can see but there are several pins that are shorted on the bottom one two three four five pins and then there are another five and those measure that connection there 2395 I'm holding the probes uh, with positive to negative and I'm not making a good contact that's why it's making those but there you have 24 volts um, this is basically what you need if you have 24 volts going out of that power supply most likely it is working there's a number of up other output voltages here like um, regulated 12 volts that you can measure as well and last any power supply is not guaranteed to be properly functioning uh, when you test it like that that is without load load that is when you actually put something to those voltages to uh, supply current can make the power supply malfunction when when another external board is connected the power supply may out of a sudden lose its ability to provide output voltages so a proper testing should include loading any one of the output voltages here uh, regulated 12 volts oh there's another switch that turns on the output voltage for the t-cone 12 volts somewhere maybe those regulated uh, t-cones it says here so sometimes there is more than one switch in the plasma tvs there is more than one switch uh, and uh, what was I saying normally on power supplies especially for plasma TVs there is a small table uh, written on the board printed on the board that tells you how much current should you be able to pull out of the output uh, output voltages of the power supply I don't see one here which means that we'll have a hard time figuring out and loading it properly um, truth be told, or at least our truth, um, problems with power supply failing under load are maybe one in a hundred. Uh, roughly speaking, maybe even less than that. I don't. We don't have exact statistics, but they are rare, definitely. And uh, it is simply not worth price-wise to be doing a, a complete and proper test every time. It is one of the things that people say, what kind of an engineer, people may say, what kind of an engineer you are, if you don't do test it properly, well, we're the engineers that actually have to turn a profitable at the end of the day to be able to put something on the table. And uh, with one in a hundred problem, unless there is a particular board that is known to develop such an issue, and I can think of one that has that, and we test that one under load, uh, it's simply not worth if a problem persists after we send a board to a customer it will be sent back it will be tested under load we will either load it with an external electronic load or more simple we'll just put a, a powerful resistor and start increasing the current um, until we see what is the breakdown value at which it will stop producing output voltage and we know what to expect pretty much a standby voltage is very uh, low power I would say 3.3 or 5 volts depending on the design maybe up to 200 300 milliamps in some cases it can go up to an amp uh, main 5 volts going to the power supply maybe 1 2 3 amps again depends on the design and the model uh, we know what to expect even if it's not printed but of course it's better for it to be uh, hopefully that did help you if you don't have uh, such a cable for jumping those two you can short them with a simple tweezer, it is just less convenient to touch here and here.
but it definitely does work. As long as your hands are free that you can actually measure the output voltage. Don't forget to check the PFC as well here. And uh, hopefully that helped. Thank you.